welcome to stationary test drive with Inky Memo. Today we are going to be looking at the pilot parallel pen. I'm Samesh. Uh, this is Minjal. And I'm Vishal. And just before we start, let's talk a little bit about what we're doing. Uh, Samir. Um, I've currently been working on a bunch of botanical illustrations. Just drawing uh, trees that I saw while I was growing up around me. I'm at uh, Samir Bharadwaj on Twitter and Instagram and at SamirBharadwaj.com. Minjal? So, um, I've been actually exploring some... Uh, so, I've been exploring some uh, abstract calligraphy uh, designs that I hope to eventually uh, use on some merchandise. Um, I'm hoping these are out by uh, gifting season. You can check more of this on uh, my Twitter and Instagram which is Minjal Kadakya and my uh, website as well. Isn't every season gifting season? I don't think there should be a special season. Certainly not for our products. Uh, and I'll just throw this up on the screen since I don't have it at hand with me, but I'm currently color coloring through 120 character designs that I uh, did over the course of 2020 and 2019. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm up to about 30. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a long way to go, but also you know, well in there. But today, let's not talk about coloring or about anything else. Let's talk about the pilot parallel pen. Uh, Samir and Minjal, you guys are the stationary experts here. I'm just the, I'm just the, no, the just sex the, appeal. Just the art expert. No, I'm just the sex appeal that shows up for, you know, look, I have, my hands are there for... So tell so, us about this. So today we are going to be talking about the Pilot Parallel Pen, which is this very unique and beautifully shaped pen. But more importantly, it has a very, very unique nib, which is which is made up of two parallelly placed metal um, plates. plates. Hence the name. And this gives you a flexibility and a variety of line, which uh, your regular fountain pen or calligraphy pen just cannot match. Um, our aim with this series is to try to come at a particular tool from our various different creative directions and see what we can do with it. Um, so I would, well let's start by seeing what we've all come up with. So Minjal, what have you done? Um, so. I've kind of um, stuck to the more conventional uh, use of the pilot pen, which is um, there's this floral uh, calligraphy uh, design. And uh, the other thing that I've done is I've deconstructed um, alphabets and placed them in a square to make it, um, you know, maybe a design that can go on a t shirt or, you know, a keychain. Or... So these are the Roman alphabet, the English alphabet? Uh, these are actually the basic strokes uh, for Gothic calligraphy. Okay. So these are just strokes that I've kind of arranged to look like alphabets. Okay. So it also looks like a nice abstract design, but so, you know somebody could actually see that this is a K. Ah, uh, right, right. Yes. So this is Minjali's. Something like that. Yes. Okay. And so this one, I noticed that this one is done in a an almost like an emerald green. Right. Here, there's shades of blue as well. So what I've uh, what I've done is I've used the the, the eco line uh, hmm. colors hmm. and uh, blended two colors together to hmm. give to give it this um, gradation. How do you blend two colors together? Do you use two separate pens or do you use uh, two different times? Well, you could use two uh, different pens, but uh, what the p parallel pen lets you do is you know it's very easy to just kind of dip into you know different. Ah, okay. So um, you're not, let's, let's just show this to the people because first of all, it has a very unusual closure in that it says screw top. Most, uh, most fountain pens that we use certainly ha have a pull, right? Is there any reason, do you guys know why this thing is, or it's just a stylistic thing? I think it's purely a stylistic thing and it, it also seems to be a kind of big division in the fountain pen world because you actually do find people discussing the difference between pull tops and screw tops so yeah, i guess I mean, it's very much a it's a, a choice that people have and feel strongly about because my uh, my experience with fountain pens has always been that you pull to use the pen and then you unscrew to refill the cartridge like you see here so but you didn't use it with a cartridge in there you just kept an empty thing 
Uh, yeah, so it was. Uh, I mean, that is optional. You can leave the cartridge in, and mm. you can blend the color that is in the cartridge with something that you, you know, okay. put, put in a palette. Well, that's so, an interesting way of using it. It's not the usual. But then this is an unusual pen. That's why we are talking about in, it. In fact, one of the um, one of the recommended ways. Because the parallel parallel pen is uh, very much sold as something where you can blend colors, and one of the recommended ways that you will find mentioned in a lot of places is to actually fill two different pens with different colors, and then at the point where you want them to mix, you just kind of pass ink between the nibs. Oh, okay. Because so, of the very kind of loose design of the nib, you can actually do that. No, and that actually works quite well. So now we. Samir, you and I used a pen with sepia ink in them. We used Schaefer sepia colored ink, and um, this is a this is just a very rough, probably a 180 or 200 GSM drawing paper. That's the one that we use. Minjal, you use something specifically made for calligraphy? Is that? You know, the Rodia pads are actually very famous with uh, lettering artists across the world. Okay. They're um, you know easily available, uh, not very expensive. And uh, the dotted, uh, you know, uh, structure helps. Okay. And it's a nice smooth one though. Yeah, it is. Okay. So the problem that I think both Samir and I had is that the pen really fights you on, especially for drawing. This is a test sheet of mine, which I just keep at the side whenever. So you can see all sorts of pens are, you know, on it. Uh, but again, mostly the parallel pen in this case. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll show you our stuff as well. But yeah, the I think the paper choice is a... Uh, major factor in how smooth uh, an experience you'll have. In both our cases, I think it was, uh, you know, fighting us. So, Samir, why don't you show us what you have? Yeah, I mean, you can show yours as well because I think it's it's in, similar. In our case, we have both used the same ink, so it kind of. Um, so yeah, we both did illustrative things. Um, I did a portrait, and Samir did a. Uh, a cactus, I think, or you know, some kind of marital aid. Um, <laughs> cool internet art. I don't yes. know. But you've used copy paper. Yes. So that's just the standard ATGS, and you can almost you can see it going, you know, Which is through why the you, page. It does go through the page a little, but not bad to use. Yeah, that wasn't the problem here, but it was fighting me basically throughout the thing I could almost never pull a vertical stroke the way you've done here yeah so I was always like doing this scratchy which is interesting it gets you this almost etch etching like look um, but I think having used this a little now I in in Vishal in my case we both used uh, the a single pen hmm. the the pilot parallel pens do come with a plastic strip which you use to pass between the nib and clean out any of the debris that's left over. Ah, yes. And I think that's something that we might have missed out on because we have tried various different colored inks over time and eventually... Eventually have, there's a build-up. Yeah, you have build-up and dried up pieces. So I think in our case it might be that we just need to kind so, of physically so, clean it a bit more. So there's this reservoir here, right? It's not just going directly from the ink cartridge to the nib. Yeah. And there's this, Which this whole mechanism more of a steady here. kind of flow, but I think that also leads to areas where it can dry out and clogging. Clog. Right. And which is always a problem with these. Uh, have we tried other inks on them? I think we have stuck to fountain pen inks. The thicker things like uh, Sumi ink or any of those will be too gritty um, for yeah, this. Yeah, I think from what I read about it, any fountain pen ink is what's recommended for it. Hmm. And uh, if you do find... Um, sort of an acrylic based or a pigment based ink like a sumi ink then they recommend that you just use it as a dip pen yeah. because the, the reservoir just doesn't work very well with uh, with pigmented inks so how what's the history of these these are obviously modern pens but they try for a you know a very uh, classic style let's say uh, are parallel pens some things that have been around for a long time I think in this present form, it's very much a modern design. I, I know Vishal and me have only seen this maybe over the past 10 years or so, this yes. particular design. Um, as far as the history of it, I think the, the actual history of pens that use two metal plates to uh, produce a line are, are extremely old. Okay. It's just that uh, the traditional calligraphy pen that uses that technique is a folded pen, which is a, a single piece of metal that you kind of fold this way and therefore you have the two plates 
so it's just a uh, this is kind of an innovation on that uh, technique the folded pen was very much a dip pen because you couldn't have uh, a reservoir that would pass ink into that sort of structure so mm. what they have done is to get you the the flexible line of a folded pen but with a very traditional fountain pen reservoir so this is mostly down to just uh, capillary action yes okay and so gravity i guess well yes gravity gravity helps us all in so i think that's covered mostly what we can do with it in terms of the kind of line quality is clearly you can get a variety of lines depending on how uh, how face on it is uh, are there any things that were surprising to you about how, when you were using it look you know i've been practicing calligraphy for almost 15 years and uh, i have to say that this is my most favorite writing instrument okay um purely because it is really um easy to use and like um samir mentioned very easy to clean hmm. uh they now have some six uh, nib sizes which you know kind of um lets you get that flexibility between like um thick strokes and thin strokes hmm. so uh, it works um, really well whether you're a beginner or a professional artist okay it's dashara right now so you will hear some people uh, banging drums outside that's just india that's where we all are so uh, it's a festival so <laughs> apologies for that if that uh, if we are getting in the way of that actually because you know maybe you're not used to those things but minjal you've done some other work with this pen so just show us more of that you showed it to us at the beginning but just you know we might as well look through and see what else you can do with just like like this is just plain because blacking because the the good right? thing so here is that minjal is someone who uses this pen regularly and vishal and me have pretty much never used it yeah. before so it's we're, two we're very different complete ways of novices, looking at so it. So um what I've been uh, doing how I actually um, work on designs is I like I mentioned earlier uh, take alphabets try to deconstruct them break them up uh, into basic strokes and uh, what the pilot parallel lets you do is you know you get these really thin fine strokes that you contrast with some really thick strokes and uh, that makes it uh, visually um, you know also very uh, good to look at So that's the that's the kind of work that I've been doing Okay so I think the the festivities are getting closer so we might as well wrap up for a bit this episode at least uh any other thoughts about this pen other than to go and get it i guess oh, I it's absolutely a joy to use i did a lot of um, portraits and you know general drawing with uh, felt tip calligraphy pens and there's just something so much um, so much more characterful about a fountain pen like this rather than a felt tip which kind of loses some of that um, that organic quality so it's absolutely something i'd use again but i think paper choice and ink choice is extremely yeah. important when yeah. you're playing with this yeah because the i think the thing that a lot of people discount is the paper affects you very much as to what because you could get this even art paper you can get it and you will see in upcoming episodes the same paper how it reacts to it takes to some mediums wonderfully but clearly for this one maybe if you want to do artwork maybe go all the way up to something like a smooth crystal board uh copy paper is certainly fine clearly uh these notepads are great for it and we love them but you know for finished work certainly if you want to uh have the nice clean look and that doesn't mean that you can't fight with it and get this nice really scratchy thing like some is that there is an organic quality to it and yet at the same time you have this uh precision that you won't get in a a, a felt tip one i think so i think that's about all we have um, do we sign off yeah just before we go again just uh, tell us where we can you can find you on online for more um just um, subscribe to the inky memo youtube channel we will be producing more of these and other stationary videos as well um and you have a newsletter as well and we have an email newsletter that you can sign up for which you can find at inkymemo.com um turn on your notifications and all that stuff that people tell you to do on youtube because like, sub- uh, subscribe hit that bell all that stuff we will be producing more of these and it would be nice if you can see them when they come out Um I think that's about it for this time. Um 
Vishal, what do you have to say to all those stationary holders out there? Use your stationery, please. Don't just keep them in a box like I do. <laughs> <laughs>